Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me. Here in Australia, we are currently in summer and we are having one of those really classic Australian summers for the tropical area that I am in. It is humid, it is, it's not as hot as it has been in the past when it's a lot drier, but it, we are getting warm days, humid, and we're getting lots of afternoon showers. And what happens when we are getting all of those afternoon rainstorms is we get lots of mozzies. And I think a lot of people in my local area and throughout sort of other tropical areas of Australia are experiencing this same problem because my outdoor body spray has been selling like crazy. So today I'm going to take you along and show you how I actually create this and this is one of the products that my lavender which is just behind me here goes into. Over on the Create With Soy Patreon page I am sharing the recipe for this one so I give you a lot more information about why I chose certain ingredients to go in here. I give you a few little alternatives as well. Now if you also come and join us over on the Patreon page in January 2021 I have bought a recipe back from out of the vault. So these are recipes that are older than six months they go into the vault and that is a place where you can go and access all of the recipes so we've brought one back into the five dollar level for the bites balm so if you do go outside forget to spray you can always apply some bites balm to um, try and help with the itch that you get from those bug bites but for now we are going to go and make the outdoor body spray and see how easy it actually is to make let's go Alright, so we're going to make our body spray and before we actually jump into that, I'm filming off the new camera and I can now really see the difference. If you watch the vlog um, on the weekend, I said that this new camera had a 25mm wide lens, my previous one had a 28 and I can now actually really see the difference. I've got my camera at exactly the same angle as the older one and you can see it gives so much space here that you can now actually see the tripod legs. So I am actually going to zoom you in so you don't have all this other distraction going on around and then we're going to get into making this body spray. So the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out my essential oil blend and I'm using essential oils which are all known to have bug deterring, uh, deterring sort of um, qualities. Usually I don't mix and match my scales when I am weighing stuff out but because essential oils do require you to be a little bit more accurate um, with the weighing out process. I like to use my little jewelers scales to do this because they are far more accurate than my bigger set. My big set of scales only measure in one gram increments but this one goes down to 0.01 I think it is. Well, yeah 0.01 so we can get a lot more accurate readings because you really don't want to overshoot on your essential oils especially if you're using something like nutmeg which has a very very low usage rate. Um, you really don't want to be causing any skin irritations. Oh and my scales just turned off. I must need a new set of batteries in this. Let me try that again. I will go and put a new set in here so we don't run out halfway through actually measuring these out. All right, so we've got the new set in there and let's keep measuring these out. When you come over for the recipe over on Patreon, I do have a couple of suggestions for blends of essential oils. Some of the ones I've got in here are actually quite expensive. So I do give some alternatives to some other essential oil blends which are, are meant to be good at deterring those nasty little bugs. So let me get all of these weighed out. Oops. Because we are adding all these essential oils into water we need to make sure that they solubize into the water so we're going to use a solubizer in here and that will just mean that the spray doesn't need to be shaken every time you go to use it all right so give that a really good stir just to make sure that that is well and truly incorporated in there So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my bigger set of scales here. Now I always get lots and lots of questions about this set of scales. There is no brand name on them. I have got a link down in the description box to the place that I purchased them from off the Australian Amazon site. 
Um, if you're not within Australia, all you really need to do is have a look for electronic digital scales and all these sort of fruit and veg scales will pop up and you want to get, they usually come in 40 kilos and they come in different divisions. So you get a one, five and 10. Um, try and get yourself that one gram division because if you go for a five you don't know if you're trying to measure out four grams or something or 24 or 23 you cannot do it so you need to make sure you get in the one gram division on here first thing I'm going to add into this one or the next thing I should say is some alcohol now I like to add just a little bit of alcohol into this particular spray I don't usually add it into my body sprays but for this one I like to add in just a little bit of alcohol I'm adding in a small amount so that I can still actually ship this as a product and I put it in so that you don't get left with this really watery wet feeling after applying your spray this alcohol just helps to evaporate it just enough but still leave behind all that lovely smelling essential oil blend to keep those bugs away so the next thing I'm going to do is actually mix in my solubizer and my essential oils in with the alcohol all right so now that we've got all of that incorporated it's time to measure out the water component of this I'm going to do this in a bigger container because we are doing a fair bit today first thing I'm going to measure out is a little bit of glycerin just so we can add a little bit of humectancy to this so that it actually feels really nice on the skin And then we're going to add in our water components. So I'm using some distilled water. Now you can just use distilled water as the sort of component in here, but to make this a little bit extra special, what I like to do is add in some lavender hydrosol. And this particular hydrosol I make myself, but you can actually purchase any of the hydrosols from most sort of bath and body suppliers. Now this is actually cloudy because I also add into my hydrosol a little bit of preservative just to make sure that it keeps nice and fresh. Now, if you look at the bottom, of this bottle you can see all of that dark orange sort of color that is actually lavender essential oil now I don't make enough essential oil off of my hydrosols to actually keep it in terms of lavender so I like to leave it in here what we'll do is just give that a bit of a mix first to make sure that that is all blended through that water and I'm going to top up my water component with this lavender hydrosol now at the moment my lavender is got flowers on it but it's not at the best time to actually harvest it and make hydrosol with it but this year once I've got more flowers I will take you along for the actual processes of how I make my hydrosols so just going to whisk all that together and then hopefully this pot's big enough. I've actually increased my batch size today. Oop, and I hate this pouring jug. And I'm just going to blend all that in there. Now I know the number one question I am going to get is how to make that into a clear solution. Um, as of yet, I have not found a solubizer here in Australia that I can actually make a clear solution with. Um, as far as I'm concerned, like for me personally, that creamy colour, if ever you've made lotions and creams, um, you will know that means that your water and oils are solubized. If it's clear, it's quite possible at this stage you've actually not got enough solubizer in it. Now I know some places um, do have polysorbate 20, I believe it is, that they use and it goes clear. And I have actually bought in a new solubizer that has polysorbate um, 20 in it and it, rec it says that it goes clear but I I've not had success with it it has gone clear but it's also split out so the oils are floating on top of the water so I'm not very happy with that solubizer so as far as I'm concerned that is perfect for me and I'm going to be putting mine into some metal bottles so it really doesn't bother me that this is a milky looking color at all so now it's time to actually split it out of this bigger container into some smaller jugs so we can start um, bottling it up. Alright, 
So as you saw while pouring that, the brain finally kicked into gear <laughs> and I ended up putting both the bottle and the, um, the funnel onto my scales and tearing it out so I could just pour it straight into the container. That's what I always do. We just, we seem to have those moments where we seem to forget what makes um, sense and once that actually kicked back in that that's how you do it uh, it became much easier and less messy to fill all of these bottles up so what I like to do with my really big bottles is I put a big trigger spray on these big bottles I sell as a sort of family home size sort of bottle um, you could even take them camping with you but these are sort of designed to be at home and um, the whole family can use them um, makes it nice and easy and then I have little 100ml bottles that I also do in this spray. I've still got plenty of those. And those are for more of the travel sort of size. So they do actually fit quite nicely into a bag and or into the picnic set and that sort of thing. And it's just a nice little fine mist um, sprayer rather than a trigger sprayer on them. And people love having both of those options. I usually have people have one for home and one for out and about. So but this is the, the more sort of common size. So I've also almost got those on and then it's time to get the labels on these. All right, so let's get these all labeled up. Now these particular labels here, they I print them up on a big A4 sheet, cut them down to size. I have designed these particular ones in Corel Draw. They're from before I got my new label printer. And then I am printing them up with a HP laser printer. I just need a cloth to hold that steady. I just grabbed a clean cloth out the cupboard there that just holds it nice and steady for me. So as I said, these get printed on my HP laser printer and these are on a clear um, sticker sheet. Now I did have to change my clear sticker supplier because I wasn't, I got a, a shipment of them and I went to put them through my printer and they just did not want to go. And I'd been ordering from this particular company for years and when I went back to them, he said, oh, well, you obviously can't use these in your printers. Like, um, I've been buying them from you for years. Um, so I think he's actually changed where he gets them from. And now the sticky's not very good. And it just destroyed them as it went through, or my printer destroyed them as they went through. Um, so I've had to change my supplier. And I'm just, I'm not very happy. That one has got an air bubble in and that's why I'm not very happy with them. Um, I don't know if, yeah, you can just see it on the camera there. Now, some people are not going to be worried about that, but I, I don't like that look of air bubbles in my, in my stickers there. So, but um, if you did see, I think it was in a vlog, I actually showed it, um, showed these other stickers and... I really was very unhappy with those ones. Let's try putting these on slightly different. So this is actually going to be on the back of the bottle. So let's try this way. One of the sort of things I found with applying labels is to kind of stretch them as you go and that really helps to get out all the um, creases. So we'll try that and then just smooth it around. All oh, that seems to be going on better. So maybe this will be my new supplier. I'll go and grab one of the other bottles and show you what I mean by the other labels that I wasn't happy with. And we can hopefully, oh yep, yeah, can swizzle that around a little bit. So this is actually my third sort of supplier I am trying for these clear labels. And now that I've actually taken the real time to put that one on, I'm actually really quite happy. So we might be going back to them to get more. This was one of the first suppliers I tried. And again, I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up too well, but you can see there is a lot more air bubbles. The actual um, label material on this is really thin. So it's really hard to actually control how this goes on. And every time I think I've got it nice and smooth, it just all bubbles up again. And this was the second supplier that I tried. And you can see this is a really milky look and the labels feel tacky. I'm really, really unimpressed with these particular labels. I only 10 sheets at a time so it wasn't too much of a, a bother but I'm thinking I am really liking these labels if as long as I take that sort of time to apply them nicely so if we come back onto the back of our bottle here 
So I'm just peeling off only a sort of small section, pulling it nice and tight as I'm laying it down on my bottle there. And then as I, it's a bit like contacting a book, you know, you used to push your ruler along the, the sticker and move the paper out the way, kind of using that same theory to do these, but using my thumb instead of the, the ruler. Oh, and that's gone on beautifully again. A couple of little air pockets down the bottom, but they can be moved out. And that is what my larger bottle of outdoor body spray looks like. All right, so there they are. That is the outdoor body spray all done up, ready to go on the shelves and ready to get shipped out again. So as I said, if you do want the recipe for my outdoor body spray, you will need to come and join us over on Patreon to get that. And don't forget that Bite Ease Balm is also available for the month of January 2021. And until the next video comes out, I hope you have a good one and I will see you then. Bye.